It sounds fantastic. Four crucial biomarkers have been found in the vicinity of an exoplanet for the first time. Has the James Webb Telescope found extraterrestrial life on K2-18b? It's quite possible that this is exactly the case, because thanks to the latest technology from James Webb, this world, which is around 124 light years away from us, turned out to be a water planet that could harbor even more life than Earth. However, we have to reckon with the fact that these life forms are quite different from what we generally imagine. I see in worlds such as K2-18b could actually produce life that completely contradicts the laws of terrestrial biology and leaves us astonished. K2-18b orbits a red dwarf star called K2-18 far away in the constellation Leo. Only 124 light years away from us, this planet is one of the new superworlds that could be even more suitable for life than our home. This planet was discovered back in 2015 by the Kepler Space Telescope. But this telescope was simply not able to find out what exactly K2-18b is and what is going on in its environment. We knew from further observations with the Hubble Telescope that this planet is slightly larger than Earth and smaller than the icy giants of our solar system. K2-18b's radius is about 2.6 times that of Earth and it has a mass about 8 times that of Earth. Because it was very probably also classified as a rocky planet, K2-18b promptly made it into the League of Super-Earths. These extraterrestrial worlds are somewhat larger than Earth, somewhat closer to their star and therefore warmer, and they would of course have to have water in order to be able to produce organic life at all. James Webb has now been able to confirm the presence of water, and even more. The new space telescope can reliably determine whether and even how much water there is around an exoplanet. Since the new star among telescopes has set its eyes on this planet, we have the truth. K2-18b is definitely a rich water world, and the oceans on this planet are probably far larger than those on Earth. James Webb was even able to detect water vapor in the atmosphere of K2-18b, and that is a sensation. The vapor proves two things. K2-18b is warm enough for life, and the planet has geological and thermal processes. This means that it's active and alive like our Earth. However, the discovery still has a small catch, because water vapor in the atmosphere of an exoplanet does not necessarily mean that the planet is life-friendly. So, will we soon be able to announce that we have finally found life in space, or not? Here are three more discoveries by James Webb of crucial importance. I see in worlds better than Earth. Can you imagine that scientists spent decades searching for planets similar to our Earth to finally detect life there, overlooking the category of planets that are even richer and even more life-friendly? The Hycean planets are a whole new class of exoplanets that surprise and astonish. These planets, also known as mini-Neptunes, are currently considered the largest group of planets outside our solar system. This means that the cosmos is full of these rich water planets and possibly also life. But until James Webb appeared, we had no way of finding these planets. On Hycean worlds, water rules. It's similar to us, except these worlds could be all water and land masses may be completely absent. Some of these worlds could also be so hot that they consist almost entirely of water vapor. And this could also apply to K2-18b. Worlds that fly through space like gigantic hot thermal springs are also conceivable. Hycean is a brand new word to describe these fascinating worlds. The term is made up of hydrogen and ocean. Typical for these exoplanets are always large, water-rich oceans and a thick hydrogen atmosphere. These bizarre worlds are also known as mini-Neptunes because they are smaller versions of the well-known gas giants Neptune and Uranus. They probably have a solid, rocky core and a thick atmosphere of hydrogen, helium, and water. Neptune could also once have been a Hycean world, as researchers found that this deep blue planet was not always positioned in its place in the solar system. Either Neptune used to be closer to the sun, or it was captured from outside the solar system. Water is, of course, the key element for the existence of life as we know it. However, other conditions are also important to be able to reliably detect biological activity within these worlds. The high pressures and temperatures, especially in the deep oceans of Hycean planets or in the dense atmospheres of many Neptunes, could produce forms of life that are fundamentally different from terrestrial life. We must expect to find life forms that we would never have imagined in our wildest dreams. It's even possible that intelligent life exists on these water worlds, 
that has adapted to life in or underwater in a very special way. James Webb sounds the alarm, biomarkers in the atmosphere. This new telescope is truly magical. James Webb pointed his fine sensors at the planet for just a few hours and found three biomarkers. The first exciting find is methane, a gas that is almost exclusively produced by organic life forms, at least on Earth. Next, James Webb detected CO2 in the atmosphere of K2-18b, and here too, we know that this gas is naturally only produced by geological activities or life forms. On top of that, we found possible traces of dimethyl sulfide, which is also a molecule that on Earth comes primarily from living organisms. This gives us reliable evidence for water and for three biosignatures in the vicinity of K2-18b. But how can we now find out whether, and above all, what kind of life is there? Scientists are currently still exercising restraint on this question. They do not want to claim to have found life at this time, even if the evidence is overwhelming. These chemical signatures in the atmosphere of K2-18b are convincing, and behind closed doors, scientists are celebrating this significant find. In particular, the presence of DMS is actually such a clear indicator of biological activity that there is little room for doubt. K2-18b must contain at least simple marine organisms such as bacteria or even plankton and algae. However, there remains a tiny possibility that these chemical signatures could also be caused by non-biological processes. While it's unlikely that all three clues are non-organic in origin, skeptics say that we do not know exactly what chemical processes are going on in these worlds. Earthly standards could lead us astray. So, we are still at the very beginning of this discovery, and we don't know how research in this area will progress. If we discover more and more evidence of life, we will have to come up with technologies to investigate these worlds more closely. We don't know what they will look like at the moment. Until then, let's let our imaginations run wild. What could life on K2-18b look like? Let's go on a short journey to this distant world. Through the windows of our spaceship, all we can see at first is the thick atmosphere of water vapor and hydrogen. As we fly through the hull, the outside world seems like absorbent cotton to us. Only much lower down does a bright blue sky clear and we see water. Nothing but water and rising vapors. The water on this planet is much warmer than on Earth and the pressure in the atmosphere is much higher. We can therefore only stay for a short time and get an impression from our safe space capsule. We fly over the ocean and keep an eye out for land masses. At the poles and along the equator, there are sporadic small elevations that look like islands. To see what is going on there, the captain of our flight scans one of the islands with a high-resolution camera system. Colored spots that look a bit like slime appear to be moving on the islands. But the slime moves, just as we are used to seeing animals do. We watch the goings-on in amazement for a moment, then continue on our way. We see something else on the islands that look like flowers, but then again, not. We have never seen such shapes and colors before, and our brains reach the limits of their perceptive capacity. Now we are getting closer to the water. The scientific crew of our flight has a camera on board, which is lowered into the ocean using winches. We are amazed when the camera reaches below the surface of the water. There are again these patches of color that look like a vicious mass. They seem to expand in the water of the planet, and it's impossible to tell whether these life forms have eyes or a face. The camera moves even deeper, and the color of the sea changes from a bright light blue to a bright violet. Tiny threads appear in front of the camera, which are apparently responsible for the purple color. These threads form a layer of several hundred meters before the water changes completely. Suddenly, our camera rushes into the depths. The water here seems to generate hardly any resistance. The image shakes, and we can see a bright light in the very depths of the ocean. The idea of such an expedition sounds tempting, doesn't it? It's a shame that it will probably take us dozens, if not hundreds of years, to turn such a journey into reality. To get to worlds like K2-18b, we need to master the faster-than-light drive, because even if we could travel at the speed of light, it would take us 124 years to get there. James Webb will find life. One small consolation is that James Webb will surely find more and more traces of life in space in the next 10 years. 
Thanks to advanced technologies, we can delve even deeper into the mysteries of the universe, and K2-18b is just the beginning. James Webb can detect light across a much broader spectrum than any previous telescope could, and Webb specializes in light in the infrared range. The MIRI instrument is even capable of detecting large light sources on distant planets. This means that MIRI could capture and report light emissions from cities, large industrial facilities, or spaceports. This would allow us to detect larger extraterrestrial civilizations without having to travel to the location ourselves. MIRI stands for Mid-Infrared Instrument and is one of the four main instruments of the James Webb Telescope. This instrument is specially designed to observe the universe in the mid-infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum, and these wavelengths are particularly important when it comes to studying distant objects in the universe. MIRI easily detects the chemistry of interstellar clouds such as the Orion Nebula, and MIRI scans the atmospheres of exoplanets. Click subscribe, because there will soon be even more impressive videos.